When I first started using this keyboard, I assumed that I would just kind of use it for a month or so, and then switch back to the Kinesis when I got tired. Aesthetics, I considered myself more of a Kinesis guy before, but now I like having lights on my keyboard for no other reason than to attract and impress beautiful women at coffee shops. You get the ability to split, you have some programmable keys to help make your life a little bit easier, and all of that is in my opinion. Your hands and wrists might hurt because you are in this weird crunch position. Your back, your neck, your shoulders might hurt because you get all hunched in like this. Now, if you're going to go to level two, you absolutely have to be able to touch type, meaning you don't have- Is this the perfect keyboard to help you with your neck, shoulder, hand, and wrist pain while you're typing all day long? Is this a good gift for someone you love, like maybe yourself? I'm gonna talk about the Cloud9 Ergo 10 keyless ergonomic keyboard that I have here in front of me and that I have been using for several months now. I'm gonna share what I really like, I'm gonna share what I dislike, and I'm going to explain how it has kind of ruined my life because now I am in this situation where I'm constantly on the search for something that might not exist. And in this video, I'm also going to explain three levels of ergonomic keyboards so you understand where this falls into the grand scheme of things and how it might or might not be a good fit for you. So if you're ready, let's get ready to think right, move right, and feel right. So before we dive into the specifics of the Cloud9 Ergo TKL keyboard, let's talk about ergonomic keyboards in general so you understand why you would even consider one, and we're gonna do this real quick. So first of all, when you are typing with a normal keyboard and you are just locked in like this on your laptop or your desktop, you are going to be pulling your shoulders in, closing your shoulders, closing off the space between the arm and your chest, and that is going to lead to reduced blood flow into your hands and wrists. It can lead to shoulder mobility issues that become painful, and you might end up with diagnoses like shoulder impingement or rotator cuff tears or bursitis or what have you. Your hands and wrists might hurt because you are in this weird crunch position. Your back, your neck, your shoulders might hurt because you get all hunched in like this. Now, in order to combat that, you would need to have some way to open up your chest and shoulders, and that's where something like an ergonomic keyboard comes into play. An ergonomic keyboard can give you a little more room, and it can help you open up so that you're no longer crushing in like this, and that is going to help you feel a lot better. And before we jump into the three levels of keyboards, I wanna know, what kind of keyboard are you using? Drop me a comment down below. Now when you jump into this world of ergonomic keyboards, you're gonna find that there are three major levels or categories of ergonomic keyboards. The first level is one that is pretty much the same as normal keyboards. It's just got a little bit of extra space that allows your hands and wrists to spread out. So that version of the ergonomic keyboard is not a big departure from what you're used to. It's just gonna have a little bit of space between the two halves, and it's gonna have some contouring that makes it feel a little more comfortable so you're not just over here like this with your hands. You can open up a little bit like that but in general, it's going to feel like your normal keyboard. And you can see this one is a Logitech. It's got a little bit of that, and it even has the 10 keys that the C9 Ergo doesn't have. This is what I would consider a level one ergonomic keyboard. It's the K860. I've talked about it in a previous video that I'll link to uh, down in the description box. It's a decent step. If you're looking for an ergonomic keyboard, it doesn't really require a lot of adjustment. If you are somebody who doesn't know how to touch type, then it could be a little bit of a problem, but over time you'll definitely learn because you're not gonna wanna be jumping across um, your right hand over to the six or your left hand over to the Y. You're gonna wanna learn how to use your keyboard correctly. So that's level one. Level two keyboards are ones like the C9 Ergo TKL. They also have a version with the 10 key on the side, but this one splits. And the, this is the differentiating factor, right? If you have a split key keyboard, I consider that level two. And that makes it possible for you to open up nice and wide. I have the, uh, the C9 Ergo with their extra long um, connection cable, and that lets me get 
tons of spread between my hands. Quick comparison, this short cable that's loose here is actually the standard connection cable and that's already 12 inches long. It gives you a lot of separation already, but if you have really broad shoulders, you know you just gotta get more spread, then you can get the XL cable, which I have in here right now, that's 21 inches of spread. So I can go super wide and stay nice and open while I'm typing. Now, if you're going to go to level two, you absolutely have to be able to touch type, meaning you don't have to search for every single letter. If you are searching for every single letter and you cannot touch type and you're a hunt and pecker, well, guess what? You're gonna get neck pain from going side to side like this. So level two, you gotta touch type. In addition, on level two, you might find your keyboard has some special functions. Like you'll notice on the C9 Ergo, there's this little knob that does some stuff. It has some other buttons on the side that have special functions. They're actually programmable, so I can have them do specific things if I want them to. You will find that there are some other keyboards like this that have programmability so that you can make your keyboard do a whole bunch of different things um, so that you can reduce the number of keystrokes it takes to get through your workday. That can be really handy if you're a computer programmer or you just do a lot of repetitive tasks, you do data entry that requires you to do the same motion. Even video editors and graphics editors can find it really handy to have macros and programmable keys to get some things done a lot quicker and easier. But in general, level two keyboards are fairly easy to get used to. The only real difference is that they spread apart. The layout on the keys is all the same. You'll notice that everything is staggered the way you're used to, just like on a normal keyboard. But if you wanna go to level three, things get really crazy. We're not gonna dive deep into this, but this is a level three keyboard. It's the Ergodox EZ Glow. So it does have the same shiny bright lights that uh, the C9 Ergo has. The biggest difference with level three keyboards is that they're crazy. They're just totally crazy. The layouts are totally different. You have all these thumb clusters, all these buttons that your thumbs operate. And a lot of buttons that you're used to are gone. They're just not the same. And it gets real confusing real fast. And it's something that I will talk about a little bit later in this video, but let's first talk about the Cloud9 Ergo Level 2 ergonomic keyboard. So here is the Cloud9 Ergo TKL, which I received for free from the folks at Cloud9 Ergo to test and review. Now, when they first emailed me and said, hey, are you interested? I wasn't really that interested. I already had a Kinesis Freestyle Mac Edition, which is a level two keyboard. And frankly, I wasn't all that jazzed about having a keyboard that has bright, shiny lights. My Kinesis is just a plain Jane keyboard that just let me get things done. And that was totally fine with me. And it had all the Mac buttons. This does not have the Mac buttons. It has the Windows layout, but it's actually fairly easy to fix that. There's just some easy settings you need to adjust in Mac settings. Let me show you how easy it is to fix for a Mac. So you're gonna go into system settings. You go into modifier, you just type that into the search bar and you can customize the modifier keys. It brings this up. The only thing you actually have to do is switch option to command and this command to option and that's going to set the layout on the uh, C9 Ergo TKL to be much more like your Mac keyboard. That means the button closest to the spacebar will be your command. Uh, the Windows button, which is the next one away from the spacebar will be your option. And that's exactly how it's laid out on a standard Mac keyboard. And that's it. Once you've done that, everything is the same as your normal Mac keyboard. As you may have already noticed, it splits in half and it has this big shiny little glowing button, which actually allows me to control the volume on my keyboard really easily, which I imagine is something that's really important to gamers. But for me, I didn't expect to use it at all, but I actually found it's really handy when I'm watching YouTube videos because different videos have different volumes. Or if I switch over to Spotify, it's really handy to just go grab and twist and have that nice analog feeling. This keyboard actually comes with some pre-programmed functions that kind of make your life a little bit easier. On the left-hand side, they got select all, copy, paste, and cut, and you can actually reprogram them. I did reprogram them for myself, which is cool. It's nice to have those extra little buttons to help me do some stuff that I need, like doing screenshots or pulling up a special application that helps me copy, paste a little bit easier. But in general, all of this is pretty straightforward. The layout of this keyboard is super conventional. There's nothing difficult to get used to. It's maybe slightly different from a Mac keyboard, but if you're a Windows user, there's nothing really to get used to. Everything is where it's supposed to be. Now, 
coming from the Kinesis, I was a little put off by the fact that I couldn't adjust the tenting. Like I can't change the angle that the uh, hands rest when I'm typing, but I found that the built-in tenting on this keyboard is pretty comfortable and it didn't really bug me that much and I got used to it really quickly. In addition, it does have tenting that my Kinesis didn't have, which is the negative tenting, which allows me to put my hands down at this angle and that actually feels much more comfortable for me. Also the wrist rests, these, um, I'm not sure if it's real leather, but these little perforated leather wrist rests are really comfortable. They're really, really comfortable. These are integrated in there. You just stick them on top of the, uh, on top of the plastic of the keyboard and it just feels great. It feels wonderful. And with that negative tenting, the keyboard is kind of like a dream to me. One other nice feature about this keyboard is you don't have to use it as a split keyboard. You can connect the two halves of the keyboard like so, and that's going to be just pretty much like a level one uh, ergonomic keyboard. There's just going to be a little bit of spacing, but it's going to feel pretty much like a normal keyboard. And then if you want to just move the halves apart, you can. And one other neat little feature that gamers might care about and maybe video editors might care about is that you can actually whoop, unplug the right half of the keyboard and you can still continue to use the left half. And if you've got your mouse, you can just bring it right here and then da 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 da, everything works just like that. You don't have that right half of your keyboard getting in the way. One other neat little feature is that there is a USB-A port right here, just an extra USB-A port. So you can plug in something else. You can charge it. You can also plug in a 10 key little keypad. So if sometimes you need to do data entry with numbers, you can get yourself a little 10 key thing, USB-A plugs right here, and then it'll power your little extra keypad and you're all good to go. Or you could even just use that to probably charge something or trickle charge something with that little extra port. Now there is one nitpicky complaint that I'm sure some keyboard nerds out there will make about this keyboard. And that is that the keyboard is not wireless, but if you want a wireless ergonomic keyboard, you're gonna have to shell out a lot of extra money. So most of these ergonomic keyboards are wired probably because Bluetooth sucks and is extremely unreliable. But in any case, the Cloud9 Ergo TKL uses a USB-A plug. So if you are using a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro or whatever, you don't have one of these, you will have to get a dongle and then you'll have to plug into the dongle and then plug it into your computer directly. This isn't such a big deal to me though because normally I plug my keyboard and other peripherals into a hub that actually has USB-A ports. So it doesn't bug me, but if you are somebody who relies on USB-C for everything, you're gonna want to have an adapter ready. As for aesthetics, I considered myself more of a Kinesis guy before, but now I like having lights on my keyboard for no other reason than to attract and impress beautiful women at coffee shops. Just kidding, your ergonomic keyboard is highly unlikely to make you more attractive to potential mates. When I first started using this keyboard, I assumed that I would just kind of use it for a month or so and then switch back to the Kinesis when I got tired of this and when I got tired of having such a dope set of colors to mess around with. But what ended up happening is this completely replaced my Kinesis Freestyle for the last several months and I've just gotten really used to using this keyboard. Overall, I have been very happy with the Cloud9 Ergo TKL and I highly recommend it as a good level two keyboard. At $169, it's obviously a little more expensive than a level one keyboard. These are usually around $120, $130. Um, but you get the ability to split. You have some programmable keys to help make your life a little bit easier. And all of that is in my opinion, worth it. The tenting, the just general ability to split is totally, totally worth it. The price is in the same ballpark as the Kinesis Freestyle, especially when you factor in the extra costs of all the tenting kits and everything that you have to pay for separately with the Kinesis Freestyle. And when you compare this to a level three keyboard like the Ergodox, 
it's way, way cheaper. It's about half the price of a level three keyboard and it doesn't have all the complexity of a level three keyboard. Now there is a similar split keyboard with a conventional layout called the Digma Rays and that one will set you back about $350 or more after you've chosen your switches and all that. That does come however with fully functioning remapping ability so you can really customize all the buttons on your keyboard. It's one that's now on my radar and if you want me to review that in the future, drop me a comment down below. That one though is $350, which is about twice the cost or more of the C9 Ergo. So at this point you might be saying, well, that sounds like you really like this keyboard. What was all that stuff at the beginning of the video where you said this thing has ruined your life? And let me explain. My goal with using a keyboard like this was to just make myself a little bit more comfortable. And one thing that I've found with these level two keyboards is that the space bar is usually kind of small and cramped. And while it's not like a huge deal, I often find that my thumbs get a little sore from being cramped in all the time. So after using this keyboard for a while and looking at how it in the future will have mapping capabilities where I can reprogram buttons, I started wondering what it would be like if I could get a keyboard that had fully programmable keys and had thumb clusters. And so the Cloud9 Ergo, this level two keyboard, got me down this rabbit hole where I got the, the Ergodox EZ and really started playing with the programmable keys and developing all kinds of special custom key mapping that allows me to do things a lot faster but it has required me to relearn how to type. Now, this might sound like, um, really, could it be that hard? And I just wanna draw your attention to something here. When you look at these keyboards, you're gonna see that there's something called a staggered layout. The keys on this row are staggered relative to this one, staggered relative to this one. There's no straight up and down columns. When you look at the Ergodox, a lot of level three keyboards are like this. There's a straight line of all these keys. They're all lined up. So that means when you reach for certain keys, your fingers need to remember that instead of doing this slight offset, they have to follow this straight up and down path. And ergonomic keyboard nerds claim, some of them claim that this is better for your fingers. It's more whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's better for your finger muscles but it's definitely not better for when you have to switch back to a normal keyboard because your muscle memory gets all jacked up. So what I'd really like is to have something like a level T two keyboard like the C9 Ergo and have it be fully customizable with buttons that do what I want them to do. And if I could get a space bar that's a little longer or maybe possibly use thumb clusters optionally, that'd be great, but I really wanna I think at this point, keep a more conventional layout so that I'm able to move on to a normal keyboard when I need to. Now, people who use level three keyboards are usually like they live and die by their keyboards. They are keyboard warriors. They are software developers. They are people who are constantly typing all day long, who need to have all kinds of different functions going efficiently and rapidly without having to move their hands and arms around. I definitely like that ability with the Ergodox when I'm doing video editing or just doing random things, but moving from the level three keyboard to a regular keyboard is really tough. So you really have to ask yourself when you are looking at ergonomic keyboards, where you fit into this user profile world. Are you somebody who is a software developer? Are you willing to put in more money and a lot more time to learn how to retype and start using all these keys and all that stuff? Or are you just looking to get a little more comfortable with a pretty conventional layout? To me, the Cloud9 Ergo TKL is pretty much right there in the sweet spot. It's pretty affordable, the price is really good. The keyboard layout is very conventional. You don't have to adjust to anything there. And in the future, it will have programmability so that you can have certain keys do what you want them to do. And that will be 
huge. That would make this, to me, a perfect level two keyboard because it would give you access to all those things that make your life easier without having to relearn how to type completely. Now, if after this video you're thinking, I wanna get a Cloud9 Ergo, there are two things you need to know. First, I encourage you to use my affiliate link, which you'll find down below in the description box to get yourself a keyboard because it'll help me make more videos like this and do reviews like this. I appreciate it. It doesn't increase the cost of the keyboard to you. And second, you will discover that there's something called switches that you need to make a decision on. And you will see that there are browns and reds and whites and this is not slang for street drugs this is actually for the switches that are underneath each of your keys now browns are the default choice browns are what i have they're described as tactile they make noise so unlike your laptop keyboard you're going to hear them okay your laptop keyboard is going to be really quiet you're kind of going to hear and feel like you're just bottoming out you're just like but but it's not a very satisfying feel tactile is like you have more travel, you can really feel, yeah, I hit that button, you can hear it. It just feels a little more natural and good to me. Reds are really quiet, so they're not so, um, you don't feel the actual action of typing, you don't hear it, they're super quiet. Apparently gamers really like that. I, I like to hear it, so I'm on brown, uh, team brown, and whites are, really clicky. So I think the best example would be like, if you ha if you grew up typing in the eighties and you had like a really old keyboard, that thing was loud. It was like, chon, 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 chon. and some people like that feeling. They like that sound. But if you're working in a work environment where there are other people who will hate you for having a loud keyboard, you probably don't want to get really clicky whites. Um, if you're looking at something like the Digmas, like Digma Rays, I saw they, they have, the same kind of clicky choice, but it's blues. And I don't know what the difference is. There's a company called Kale or Kyle, Kale. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, that they, they make all these different color switches and all kinds of options. I'm not going down that rabbit hole right now. I really don't want to go down that rabbit hole. It just seems like a nightmare. But in general, those three choices, just tactile, just kind of like a nice standard medium. Reds are super, super quiet and then uh, whites or blues are really, really clicky and loud and probably very antisocial keyboard users use those. They also have a 45 day risk-free trial, which is kind of unheard of. You get 45 days to try it out. If you don't like it, they will pick it up and give you a full refund. I have never used this, but if you do end up using this, drop a comment down below so others can hear how it goes. This is kind of unheard of and seems like a really great deal. So just to recap, the Cloud9 Ergo TKL is a pretty darn good keyboard in my opinion. If you're a Windows user, I highly recommend it. You won't have really any adjustment period besides making sure you type correctly with your two hands. Otherwise, it's all good. It's got all kinds of fun little functions. It's comfortable, it's pretty high quality, and it's actually very reasonably priced for what it is. And once it gets the programmability, it's going to be kind of amazing as a level two keyboard. So if you're gonna get yourself a Cloud9 Ergo TKL for yourself or someone you love, please consider using my affiliate link, which you'll find in the description box down below. It supports this channel and supports future videos like this one. And don't forget to subscribe. To rebuild your body at home, go to uprighthealth.com DIY and find a program that'll work for you. And while you're there, consider joining my newsletter to get all my fun little freebies. For more free videos to help you with your body and your hands, your wrists, your shoulders, etc., check these videos out here. Like, share, and subscribe with the bell notification on and as always i hope you remember that pain sucks life shouldn't